Welcome, welcome, welcome. Mario Michel here. Today's topic uh, is the fanatical mind, part number five. Part number five. So we're gonna begin right into the story. Turn away from the negative side, counsel to a minister. So. To all the ministers out there, let me say this one also applies to you because it's for the minister, like people like me as well. Let's see what we can learn from that part as we begin. If you consider the result of always occupying the negative side as you have done for years to a greater or less extent, you would have a better understanding of the words of the Savior recorded in the 18th, 18th chapter of Matthew. The disciples came to Jesus with a question, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall, hum shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever shall receive one such little child in my name, receiveth me, but whosoever shall offend one of these little little ones which believe which believe in me, it were better for him that a milestone a milestone were hanged around his neck and that he were drowned into the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Um, what does that be? What does that mean? Um, basically, actually, you know what? Let me just finish the paragraph. Well, actually, let me talk about that part first. No, yeah. Um, so, who's the greatest? Uh, in the man, in the world viewpoint, the greatest is the one that can get the people to work for him or to be subservient to him in a sense be a slave to him in heaven is the opposite is the one that is the least or uh, the most giving or the most loving or the most um, humble person in a sense so if you want to be the greatest in heaven, you need to do the opposite of what people do to be the greatest on planet Earth. It's as, I mean, it is as simple as that, but it's not as easy to do based on our nature. So, my brother, cast away, let's, oh, oh, hold on. let's move on. My brother, cast away all evil thinking. Humble your heart before God, then your eyes being opened, you will be you will no longer stand on the negative side. If thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them into the uh, from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet. To be cast into everlasting life. Cut away your defective attitudes, however painful to human nature it may it may be to do this, and if oh yes, however painful to human nature it may be to do this. And if thine eye, thine eye, 
so sharp to see something to criticize or oppose or offend thee. Now, the Bible didn't see that part. She added that part on into it. So basically, the Bible actually says, And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. And in French, we call it, a person with one eye, we call it born. Born. Yeah, it's kind of weird to say it. So, mm, now, I think if we were to take this literally, then we, we, then we, we would all be walking, or not walking, because we would have no more feet, no more legs. We would not be able to t touch because we had no more hand. We would be blind because we've seen, I mean, we've done so many wrong things already. That even by, by before the age of five, okay, let's say the age of accountability is so at uh, age 12. By age 12, after the first day of, of your birthday, you probably already did something bad with your hand, or bad with your foot, or bad with your eyes. You would have already lost all of them at that age, in a sense. But we know it is not actually literal, you know. It's a, it's a figure of speech. It says, basically, if you're going to lose eternal life because of uh, a bad thing, that a bad habit. Remember, we were talking about, we were talking about the fanatical mind. Remember what we just learned earlier in chapter 4, defective ha hereditary habits or tendencies. So, those are the things that are Jesus basically referring to as your right eye or your right hand or your foot. It's not literally your foot, your eyes, but it means the thing that you want to keep into to yourself that will cause you to lose eternal life. He wants you to throw those away. Yeah. Now, could he cut off, could you just make sure your one of your hands get cut off literally so you can be saved? Yes, he can do that. Is he going to do that? Mm, he might, he might not. He would not want to, but if that will save you forever, then maybe he might do it. I don't know. You will have to ask him. Don't ask me because I don't know what he would do for me either. So, there you got it. Um... Let's see. Let's keep on going. Okay. So. Faith overcomes negativism. Oh. Now, um, what does that actually mean? Negativism and, and faith. It's not talking about being negative in the sense of... Um, saying something negative about a, an event or a, a place. No. It's more of your your way of thinking. Okay? Your way of thinking can be negative that it doesn't help anybody. Now, I'm not talking about people that are speaking truth because if you're speaking truth, then it can be negative. If you're speaking, if you're speaking facts, then it's not negative. Somebody may not like it, but it doesn't mean it's negative. Okay? So, don't don't get that part twisted. Um, negativism means you don't, you don't think anything is good. You don't think you can make this one, you think you can get there. It, it's not like people telling you the truth and you're being offended and say they're being negative. No. That's truth. Um, so, I wanted to make sure you guys get that part right. Okay, so, we shall have success if we move forward in faith. That means you are not thinking anything bad. You will not be thinking, okay, Lord, I can get victory over sin. I can get victory over this kind of sin. I can get a victory over this kind of attitude. That's what we are talking about when it comes to faith and negativism. Don't forget that. We shall have success if we move forward in faith determined to do the work of God intelligently. We must not allow ourselves to be hindered by men 
who love to stand on the negative side, showing every little fit. That's, yes, and what I just said earlier is exactly what it is. Remember, what was the comma? Remember the story of Peter? When Jesus said to Peter, um, when Jesus said to Peter, come. No, Peter said, wait, is that you, Lord? He said, yes. Um, bid me to come um, to you on the on the ocean or on the, on the sea, basically. And Jesus said, come. And Peter started walking on the water. But man, did he get scared. He lost his faith. And what did Jesus say? Oh, you of little faith. That because he went to... Because the Bible says, but when he saw the wind and the waves tossing, he basically crumbled. That's the negativism we are talking about. Keep your mind focused. Don't say that you can't do it because you can if you have enough faith in God. That's what we are now talking about. God's missionary work is to be carried forward by men of much faith and is Steadily to grow in force and efficiency. Letter 233-1904. And now I just remembered, I forgot to give the reference for the first one. I mean, it's okay, I think you guys already see it, but yeah. I forgot that part. I never forget this part. I guess it's probably I did. But it's okay. It's okay. Here we can move on. We can move on. Um... Hmm. Let's see. I don't want to keep this way too long, so you might be wondering why I'm because I, I don't want I don't want that to go long enough. Let's see. Okay, we have time still. We still got some time. The peril, and I let's go right here actually. Ooh. That was that. Faith overcome negativism, and here we are into this. Yes, the peril. Yeah, okay, the peril of individual independence. Um, let's see. I know nowadays we have that people that have that kind of. Um, I am an ind independent person. Yes, I can understand that, but remember. We all depend upon other people um, as well. So we're not just only independent people, but we also depend on other people to do certain things, you know. Basically, that's what we are going to get into right now. Um, so, the peril of individual independence. There have ever been in the church, those who are constantly inclined toward individual independence. They seem unable to realize that independence of spirit is liable to lead the human agent to have too much confidence in himself and trust in his own judgment rather than to respect the counsel and highly esteem the judgment of his brethren, especially of those in the offices that God has appointed for the leadership of his people. God has invested his church with special authority and power which no one can be justified in, regard, in disregarding and despising for he who does this despises the voice of God. The Acts of Apostles, page 163 and 164, and page 164. That's the year 1911. Hmm. Actually, yeah, that makes sense, because that's when she was writing the book, the Re that's when she was about to write the book, The Real Controversy. Yeah, that, that's right. That's, that's, uh, that's a good timing, actually. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, 
Do I have anything to say on that part? I don't know. I don't think so. Because that one is pretty straightforward. Um, but, um, yeah. I don't think I have anything to say on this one, guys. Because that's, that, that should be basically saying that we should already know that being, um, when it comes to the church, you cannot be an individual, you cannot be independent because that's not how the church functions. Even Jesus Christ wasn't, it wasn't independent when he was on the earth. Why would you, well, why would people think they can be independent when it comes to the, to the matter of that, that regards God? Satan is powerful more than any of us human beings. Only God can actually beat up Satan. So if we don't come together, then uh, in, in the in the mindset of Jesus Christ, then there is no we're gonna we cannot survive. So yes, that that makes sense. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. That it is a peril to have individual independence. Basically, that makes sense. Yeah. So. I think, yeah, I think that's it for today. Let me see. I kind of want to do the last one or this one. It, it, yeah, I want to, okay, I want to do those two because, no, that one, because it's pretty short. All right, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to stop right here into peace found in cherishing meekness. Oh, um, blessed are those in the, who are meek. Now, blessed are the meek in spirit. Blessed are the meek. Yeah, blessed are the meek. Blessed are the meek. For they shall be, for they shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek. That's Matthew chapter 5. The Beatitude 5, yes. So, yeah, they, when you become meek, meekness, when you look for meekness, you will find peace. That is true. That is actually totally true. Yeah, I can, I can, I can see that. Now, we gotta end with this one. The soul finds rest only in cherishing meekness and lowliness of heart. The peace of Christ is never found where selfishness reigns. Basically, Jesus Christ is not even selfish. So, if you think you're gonna be, you're gonna have peace by being selfish, you got it wrong. The soul cannot grow in grace when it is self-centered and proud. We talked about it in another video. I might put I might put a card on the top that mentions that Proverbs chapter six, um, six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination, and the first thing was a proud look. Ha <laughs> ha, a proud look was the first thing. <laughs> so, what does that mean? Being proud and self-centered will never get you peace. It gives you trouble, for sure. Jesus assumed the position that men must take in order that the peace of Christ may abide in the heart. Those who have offered themselves to Christ to become his disciples must deny self daily if any man wants to come after me let him deny himself and pick up his cross daily and follow me yeah he must lift up the cross and follow in the footsteps of Jesus they must go where his example leads the way letter 28 1888 well um i'm not gonna say anything on that part because because it's pretty straightforward basically so um yeah yeah i think i'm gonna stop right here guys yeah i'm gonna stop right here so this was again this was again um Mario michelle don't forget to like subscribe and hit the bell on the top is it top or top either one of them on my youtube channel and don't forget to follow me on facebook my it is at the open veil tv 
it's gonna be on the on the screen as well so guys thank you guys for watching thank you guys for listening and uh, i hope to see you again but if i don't see you again i hope to see you again when jesus comes the second time until then bye for now now you're out